What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got this uh, this motion problem, this wave motion problem. So we've got a mass hanging from a string, and it gives you these constants, and it gives you this equation, and it wants you to solve these four problems. So the first one is how long does it take the the poles to travel through the whole string, right? So let's look at what we got and see how we can solve this. So we're given this equation in terms of uh, x and t. So that's its y position in terms of its x along the string and its time uh, since the string started, right? And so it matches the form uh, y of xt is equal to a cosine kw minus wt, where w is angular frequency, k is the wave number, and a is amplitude. So from this we can determine that the amplitude of our wave is just this a value here, right? So a is equal to zero, or I guess 8.50 millimeters. And it gives us that k is equal to 172 radians a minute. Uh, and that our angular frequency w is equal to 4830 radians a second. All right, so how are we gonna solve this first part, right? Well, we know the equation um, a long time ago that velocity is equal to change in position over change in time. So we're trying to find how long it takes. We know how long it takes, right? Or we know it's uh, change in position, right? It's gonna be from one end to the other, which is 1.6 meters we found earlier on, just from a given. Uh, so if we can find its velocity, that means we can find how long it takes to cover that distance by just rearranging. So we can say delta t is equal to delta x over velocity. So we need to find velocity, right? So velocity, in this case, is going to be equal to the angular frequency divided by k, our uh, wave number. And these should give you uh, the right number. So if you put in your numbers for this, you're going to get, uh, get 4,830 divided by 172. That's going to give you 21 point, or 28.1 meters a second. So that's our velocity, right? So we can just go back to here, delta t is equal to a change of position, 1.60, divided by 28.1, and that's going to give you uh, 0 0.0570 seconds. So that's part A, 0 0.00570 seconds. So let me write that somewhere, I'll write it up here. A, uh, t is equal to 0 0.0570 seconds. That's part A. All right, part B, what is part B asking? Uh, what is the weight, W? Yeah, so what is the weight of our mass? How are we gonna do that? All right, well we got another equation we can use. So this equation is force is equal to velocity squared times the, uh, the mass per unit length which is this, this W, or this U looking thing. Uh, so we found velocity earlier, uh, what was that? I guess I should probably keep it up, right? We found that our velocity is equal to 28.1 meters a second. I shouldn't erase that, but it's there. I need that for this one. And then mass per unit length. Uh, what is mass per unit length? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Mass per unit length is equal to the mass of the string. So uh, in this case, it's not gonna be that number. It's going to be uh, that divided by, because force is equal to mass times acceleration. So if we're trying to find mass, it's going to be force divided by acceleration is equal to mass. So we're on Earth, so it's going to be gravity. So we can make this gravity. So this is going to be force divided by gravity for mass, and then over the unit length, which is 1.6 meters. Or I guess you could just put in height for this. So if you plug in your numbers for this, you're going to get 0 0.0125 divided by 9.81, and all of that divided by 1.6 meters. And what that number is going to be, please, I'm going to plug that in because I'm not sure. I didn't solve this stuff because I was kind of goofy. 0 0.0125 divided by 9.81 divided by 1.6. I did not type that in correctly. 1.6. It's a small number. It's like 7.96 times 10 to the negative 4. So basically we have a velocity here. So if you plug in this 28.1 squared times this number, 7.96 times 10 to the negative 4. Let's hope this is right. <laughs> 28.1 squared. Yeah, you get the, the right number. Uh, yeah, you do. So it gives you that force. I guess this is force tension is what I should have said. But uh, if you look at our force body diagram on this block, we have force tension holding up, force gravity pulling down. 
So because it's going to be equal, because it's not moving or anything, it's just going to be force of gravity is equal to the force of tension. So force of tension is equal to the force of gravity, you could say. That's equal to 0 0.629 newtons. I think it wants it in newtons, right? Yeah, it does want it in newtons. Okay, part C. How many wavelengths are on the string at any instant time? Okay, so we got five wavelengths. Uh, I'm going to write this answer down too. Maybe, I hope I don't need that number again. B. Uh, force of gravity is equal to 0 0.629 newtons. All right, how many wavelengths are on the string at any time? Let's solve this part. Okay, so we need wavelength, right? And wavelength, lambda, is equal to 2 pi over k. So we have all these, right? So we can say that lambda is equal to 2 pi over 172. And that number is 0 0.0365 uh, meters. That's basically... When, it, when the string is oscillating, that's the distance here, right? This is 0 0.0365 meters to cover one, one wave. I'm totally off screen. Hey, what's up? Okay. So now we have its wavelength, but we need to know how many are on the string at a time, right? So if you're, if you're trying to think like, you know, we have a distance, right? We have, you know, 10 meters, and we're saying how many of two meters we can fit in there, and you take 10 divided by two. So we have a distance of 1.60 meters, and we're going to divide it by how much each wavelength is, 0 0.0365 meters. The meters are going to cancel, and this number is just going to give you 44. I think that's rounded up. Look at that plug in, 44, yeah. 44 meters, that's the rounded number, because it just wants you to hold it here. So, or not meters, that's just how many waves, basically. The 44 waves, that's how many, that's how many waves are sitting on there at one time. All right, uh, what is part D asking? Uh, what is the equation for waves traveling down the string? Okay, so when you're looking at the form of this equation, right, um, if there's a negative, basically, yeah, we're looking at this, if there's a negative sign in front of the value attached to T, that's gonna be moving in the positive x direction. So in this case, our positive x direction is gonna be this way. But if you want the equation of the waves moving down the string, that's gonna be this direction, all you have to do is change this negative sign to a positive sign, right? So our equation is going to look something like, uh, it's going to be, uh, I guess it wants it in the whole form, so it's going to keep the same numbers. It's going to be the same numbers, right? So that's going to be y x of t is equal to, I don't have space for this, but 8.50 cosine 172 x, but instead of a negative, it's a plus, right? Plus 4, 8, zero t. And yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's how you solve these problems. Uh, not too difficult, just gotta know some equations. Uh, yeah, that's the hardest part of this unit in my opinion, is just knowing the equations and kind of having to think rationally about these kind of things. Like part C is kind of difficult, right? Because you have to think about, you know, what's happening to the wave. So if you can just kind of keep solving these practice problems and keep coming, uh, just try to figure them out, you'll be doing good. So yeah, good luck on your physics homework, guys. See you in the next video.